or not. Let's go. Nice. Oh god, watch you have a second stage! I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! Hey everyone, I'm Og, and in this video, we're gonna take a look to see if you should play Knights of Braveland. So, what's Knights of Braveland? Knights of Braveland is a side-scrolling, roguelike, beat-em-up style co-op game that can be played up with four players or by yourself. Not only can you fight enemies ranging from chickens, bandits, undead, goblins, pirates, and whatever else, playing solo versus co-op both has its own advantages as monsters can get very tanky and thick in co-op, especially if you're playing with three other players. So, let's begin. Story The story of Knights of Braveland is pretty much about a hero trying to draw the hero's guild. However, upon arrival, it's discovered that the guild has pretty much went downhill. So, as the newest member, you're tasked with eliminating an angry fat man who has an obsession with soup making. After he is defeated, our heroes pretty much goes around accepting more contracts to defeat even stronger and powerful bosses as the story progresses. Gameplay Gameplay in Knights of Braveland has a mix of action combat, strategy resource management, and RNG. So, how's it work? At the start of each contract, our heroes will be put on a map where they'll be traveling through many journeys to reach the final boss. Depending on what character and or mode you play, each character has some sort of special ability and talent that can help you all along the way. Wanna steal from goblins? Nicked. Wanna trade with pirates? Tricked. Wanna follow some beautiful ladies into a forest? Fished. Point is, every step you take, every move you make, every single game, you'll be met with a decision of choice and or RNG. What? Oh my goodness. We even had a talents bonus and we still freaking failed. Whether you're playing co-op or solo, decisions always required for the host as other players don't really get to choose unless you let them. Another shop, let's see, it's more food? It's the same shop, I mean, we went here. Oh yeah. Oops. Oh my, they used to. Difficulty. On the scale of difficulty from Sekiro as the most difficult to Coin Master being the least, Knights of Braveland sits just below Dragon Knights. While the game can be quite easy to beat on standard difficulty, it can be challenging especially if you're going to try and unlock everything. Now unfortunately, the difficulty in Knights of Braveland doesn't seem to change much. Sure the monsters can get more tanky and does more damage, the fights and attack patterns remain exactly the same. So rather than giving you a new challenge or surprise, the game itself just ends up being repetitive. Content. When it comes to content and variety, Knights of Braveland has some upgrade features as well as DLCs that can provide players with some additional equipment that works very similar to equipment already in game. But even with all of these provided, they're not really worth getting. Based on cost, the only DLC that would be worth buying would be the Fantastic Beast Pack as it comes with two new bosses. While the skins, equipment, and new characters can provide a nice visual change, there's not much else going on. But with the two new bosses, at least there's more adventure for you to try out. So should you play Knights of Braveland? Yes, while the game can be a bit overpriced for what it's worth, it's still enjoyable. Not only did I manage to put in about 18 hours from starting to completion as well as redoing some missions with friends, the game had a decent amount of content to offer which allowed replayability.